Hello everyone. My name is Chris Johnson and I'm your instructor for ETCV 511, Learning Technologies in the Digital Age. Now, to be honest, I would rather be with you on this beach in Costa Rica, which I thoroughly enjoyed when I was there. Or even I'd like to invite you out to maybe join me in your favorite bar with my favorite prophet, Jimmy Buffett, and his saying in this time, breathe in, breathe out, move on. But in this time of COVID, we do have to stay somewhat digital. And when you go back to school in the fall, nobody knows quite sure what that's going to look like. So you're probably going to have, or hopefully going to have, some face-to-face -face interaction with your kiddos. But that may not happen in some school districts. Um, in others, it's going to look just entirely different than what we've been doing. So hopefully the things that you're going to learn in this class will help you when you go back to your classroom or also help you if you have to remain teaching digitally. I think you're going to enjoy the projects that we've put together for you. So let's take a look at them. Now, before I start talking about the modules, two things about communicating. First, email is cgj at arizona.edu. And I'm pretty good at checking my email regularly throughout the day. But a better way to communicate with me is through Slack. And you'll learn how to use Slack in the very first module of this course. I have Slack on my laptop, my iPad, and on my iPhone. So Slack messages come to me pretty much throughout the day. And therefore, that's the best way to communicate with me. You can also call me in the phone number that you'll find in the syllabus. And I'll ask you to do that between, I'll say, 8 in the morning, 8 in the evening. And you can use that number to text me as well. But again, Slack is probably the best way. There are three things I'd like you to do in the first two days of class. This is a little mini module. The first one is to set up your Slack account. And there's directions on how to do this in D2L. You're going to send me a direct message so that I know that you've signed up, and then I will add you to all of the Slack channels. And there's a page in D2L that I've listed all of the Slack channels so you can check and make sure that you get put into all of them. Because to be honest, every once in a while, I miss adding one person to one of the channels. Just know that if they don't all show up, direct message me and I'll put you in. Your first task will be to post an introduction to yourself in one of the Slack channels. Then I'll ask you to look at the standards of the International Society for Technology and Education, ISTE. Then these are the student technology standards that are a roadmap for us in terms of using digital tools in the classroom. Then you begin the real work of the course with Module 1. So in Module 1, you'll create a professional or classroom website. Now, if you've already done this, or if you've done any of the other projects in this course, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just make sure that you check my criteria in D2L in the rubrics. If what you've already done matches the criteria, it's perfectly okay for you to submit that. I don't want you to make up something just because it's an assignment if you already know how to do it. But if you don't know how to do it, I think it's important that you know how to create a website, either for a professional portfolio or to support your instruction. And once you've done one, you'll be able to do the other. In module two, we'll look at visualizing understanding. Now, this is a tool that you can use for direct instruction or where it's used more often is for your students to express their understanding of data and sometimes very complex data. So you'll be creating something called an infographic. Next, we'll look at digital storytelling. And to be honest, that's what we do, folks. We tell stories. Here, you'll learn how to do that using a tool called Adobe Spark. And your story can be either for direct instruction or it might be for a nonprofit that you work with. Or you might just want to tell your story of what it's been like to be living and teaching in the COVID-19 world. Choice will be up to you. In module four, you'll start to develop your digital toolbox. By this, I mean you'll do some Googling, some searching, looking for tools that can be used in your content area. We'll be looking at it for three different things. One, a tool for direct instruction, or a tool where your students can learn on their own, or a tool that can be used for assessment. It can be any tool that you find, but we will look at the Google Suite for Education 
in case you're a Google school, which a lot of schools are, and you want to take advantage of those Google tools. In module five, we'll look at the concept of the flipped classroom. To be honest, folks, that's what happened to you. You had to take your classroom, flip it, and take what you're doing with direct instruction and putting it online so that your students were working on it before they could then meet with you in your Zoom meetings or whatever tool that it is that you might be using to meet with your students virtually. So we'll look at how this can be used both in an online environment and also when you return and hopefully you'll be able to be in the same room with your kiddos. There is a sixth module, but I didn't include it in five major modules because really you should only take about a half an hour on this assignment. I've made it due at the last day of class. It could go a couple days after the end of class if you're needing the time to finish your flipped classroom, which is the last assignment. So this is just to have you kind of look a little bit at what did you learn in the class? How might I improve it? So moving forward in this class, the course officially starts July 13th through August the 15th. But my guess is about 90% of you are looking at this on June the 8th, and the other 10% of you, one person, wanted to start the course the second week in July. That's great. I know almost everyone, if not all of you, are classroom teachers. And July 13th through the 15th is when you're going to be going back to class. So you're going to have enough on your plate. That's why I've decided to open the course on June 8th to make these projects available to you. But officially, we don't start until the 13th. And at that time, we'll be having weekly online meetings. They'll be Wednesdays at 5 o'clock Arizona time. And if you cannot make the meeting, there's an alternative assignment. Now, normally in the course, I use these meetings to talk about whatever the particular project is that you're working on at the time and answer any questions. You all probably will be done with projects by that time. So my plan is to use these weekly meetings during the official course to meet with you and discuss how you use the various projects that we worked on in your class. We'll have to play this by ear. Also, if you want to have some online meetings between June 8th and the 13th of July, I'm more than happy to do that. We can schedule some times during the day, in the evening, whatever works for you all. And to be honest, I'm negotiable on that five o'clock time. If we need to push it later because you need to be doing things for dinner with your kids, or if you wanted to do a meeting in the middle of the day, that's fine with me. The other thing that's planned for the July 13th through August 15th period is for you to comment on your colleagues' work for the first three modules. Now, you can be commenting on your colleagues' works starting June 8th until we officially start the class on the 13th, but you don't have to do that until the official time period. If you find the projects are enough and you don't have time to do the commenting, that's what you'll do on a weekly basis when we get to the July 13th to the August 15th. So these are rapidly changing times, folks. Nobody knows what it's gonna look like when we go back. For example, I've been working with some folks on planning some webinars and going back to school, and I know that the plans range widely on how people are going back to school and the idea that you may have to plan for the fact that you're in school one day and you're going back to virtual the next. We'll be as flexible as we can during this time period, then also during the official time that the course is starting and you all are having to go back to work. So I look forward to working with you, looking at what you come up with with the projects. I hope you're going to find them fun and engaging. And I'll be available during the June 8th to July 13th time period. And I should have also mentioned, we have a preceptor, Aaron Holly, who will be joining us and he'll be available to help you as well. So good luck, everyone, and stay safe.